life. And when it comes to prayer, we really want to know how to pray, don't we? There was a boat that was sinking, and the skipper of the boat lifted his voice to ask, does anybody here on the boat know how to pray? Oh, suddenly someone said, yes, Captain, I do. I do know how to pray. He said, well, good. All right, then. You go ahead and pray because the rest of us are going to put on life belts and we're a little short. We're short one. Go ahead and pray. Well, in this case, we hope you know how to pray and we hope you know how to pray well. Now, in the book of James, it talks about the power of prayer, but it also says quite often we may pray and ask amiss. We miss it. Somehow we're not right on target. Somehow we're doing something that might interfere with the very power of prayer unfolding the highest and best. The power of prayer working to manifest the desire of your heart. Somehow we miss it. Something we do, something that's in a blocking and is coming to the way of hindering the very flow and the divine flow of God unfolding within our hearts and our lives. I don't know about you, but when I pray, I want to make sure I'm praying on target. How about you? You want to pray that so we hit it? We hit the mark. You know, in the sport of archery, it's all about aiming for the target, drawing the bow back, aiming the arrow in the right direction so that it hits the bull's eye. That's the sport. It's not just about pulling the bow back. It's not just about arrows. It's not just about targets. It's about hitting the target. That's how, we, how the game is played. Same in all sports. If you're not hitting the goal, how do you score? You don't go on the football field just to pass the, the football around. You go there, hopefully, in the game to score, right? Go dogs. Okay. That was for Anissa. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> How important it is that we, what we understand is that we want to not ask amiss. We want to ask as a hit. We want to ask in a way that it brings about the results that we so desire. For prayer will bring about that desire when it begins with something so powerful. And that's the consciousness of yes. The consciousness, the awareness of yes. And that's how it all starts. That's how prayer should begin. It should begin with yes. And we think quite often, oh, doesn't it begin with dear God or, or our creator or loving Lord or some sort of address? But before we even begin any kind of expression, it must begin with a consciousness that says, I go to prayer in the power of yes, the affirmative. Yes being, yep, sure, certainly, absolutely, indeed, affirmative, agreed, okie dokie, you betcha. Doesn't matter how you say it, it's the affirmative. So say those with me because I want you to understand this. Say it with me, right? Yep. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Indeed. Affirmative. Agreed. Okie dokie. You betcha. Now you've understood the beginning of prayer. No matter what way you say it, no how you affirm it, it's just this wonderful spirit of a consciousness that says, yes, I go to prayer not in doubt. I go to prayer not in question. I go to prayer not in fear. I go to prayer in the consciousness, the understanding, yes, God is meeting the very needs of my heart and my life. Yes, I know that all things are working together for good. Yes, my whole consciousness, my framework of thinking as I go to prayer right now is that the divine is unfolding my highest and best. You see, that's the beginning of a prayer. That's where it starts, and that's the whole formatting of everything that we want to understand for our lives is unfolding the highest and best. How many of you watched the Peachtree Road Race, July the 4th? Maybe you saw it on television. Maybe some of your friends, one of my good friends, John Strickland, was running the Peachtree Road Race. I was so glad to see him take some pictures that he started at the starting line. You know, you're never going to win the race if you don't start at the starting line, right? The starting point. You know, you think, well, hey, can I go halfway? Can I start, you know, five feet from the end? Can I win the race if I don't run the whole thing? Ah, some of us would like that, but you got to start at the starting point. You got to get to the beginning. You got to get where it all takes off from. And so it is in our prayer life. The consciousness of yes is the starting point. It's where it all takes off from. It's where we begin the power of prayer within our lives. Today's beautiful scripture lesson 
that you read together unfolds this truth for us. Seen in this beautiful story, as Jesus went uh, from uh, ministries of healing, he came into a house and there were two blind men who had come to Jesus. And they said, oh, Jesus, have mercy upon us, crying out and asking for that healing power within their hearts and their lives. And Jesus asked them the very opening, the starting point, the beginning, the very uh, question that sets the whole framework for the miraculous to unfold in our lives. And that's simply, do you believe that I'm able to do this? And their reply was, yes, yes, you betcha. Agreed. Roger Dodger. I got it. I am affirming. Yes, I believe. Sure. All these expressions that we've just said is exactly what they're affirming for Jesus. Jesus waiting for that. And the Spirit of God is, it illustrates the Spirit of God is waiting for you to come to this point that, do you believe? Is there an affirming yes? Is your consciousness, is your awareness when you go to prayer starting from the beginning point that I believe the answer is yes before I even begin to pray, before I begin to express anything? My consciousness, everything about me, all my thinking, my thoughts are all wrapped up in the affirmative and the very positive and understanding that it's from there that I begin the discourse of this experience of prayer within my heart and life. For as long as you have negative consciousness, well, you know what happens? The switch is off. If your awareness, if your thoughts, if your consciousness is all around the negative, let me tell you, you've just turned the light off. If you're now in the darkness, you've switched off the very power of prayer because what you're seeking for, what you so desire within your heart and life, it has to be expressed in the affirmative because the answer to your prayer is found within the prayer. The answer to your prayer is found within your prayer. So when you pray and say, oh God, maybe kind of, sh I'm not really sure. I don't really know if this is true. That's the answer to your prayer. You prayed that because you've expressed the negative the questioning, the doubt, the fear. You're not coming from a consciousness of yes. You're coming from a consciousness of, hmm, I guess I don't know. I guess I'm not sure. I guess I don't really believe. I guess I'm afraid. I don't know if I can trust. This is why Jesus spoke to these blind men seeking healing. The first and foremost thing is, do you believe and can you express it with an affirmative, with a consciousness of saying, yes, I know it. So when we go to prayer and what we're praying for, anything that we desire within our hearts and lives, healing, direction, wisdom, insight, a new job, uh, God working within our lives to take us to a new level of spirituality or spiritual growth, it always begins with, yes, this I know to be true. The power of God is at work within me. I know it to be true because the Spirit is waiting for you. To say, do you answer the question, do you believe? Do you really believe? And that's setting us when we say, yes, I believe. Ah, then that's the beginning, the starting point for our lives. We must always begin by creating the condition that makes the results inevitable. Creating the condition that makes the results inevitable. Creating the condition that means to make ready, to prepare, to prime, to get things ready. Because something next is going to happen, but you've got to get it ready for the next thing to happen. So this is where we're priming, getting ready by answering the question, first of all, before I go to prayer, do I believe? Do I really believe? Because if you don't believe, you might as well just wrap it up and not even express the prayer anyway, because the end result is not going to be the answer that you are seeking. But when you say, yes, I believe, Yes, I believe in an affirmative. I'm priming. I'm creating the condition. I'm preparing. I'm creating the dish condition that's inevitable that the answer will unfold for me. That's faith. That's what's so important. The power of believing is crucial for you. And if you're not invoking the power of your believing, how do you expect to be receiving for? As you believe, so shall you receive. So we must engage and understand what believing is all about. It's a consciousness that says, yes. God is at work. God is unfolding. God is making it happen. I know it's working in me, through me, around me, and for me. I know all this is transpiring. And I walk and believe and pray in that. It's priming. It's preparing. It's getting ready. Now, in my house, the dreaded thing in our house is, who is going to empty the dishwasher? You know? 
It's not the greatest joy, not the greatest task in life. It's kind of like one of those things where, you know, I loaded it. Robert, I hope you unloaded. Uh, Robert looks at me and says, you know, I think I unloaded it, but maybe I didn't. Uh, and I'll walk by and says, oh, I guess it's not unloaded. Someone's going to unload it. We kind of have this dialogue back and forth. Who is going to unload the dishwasher? But if you don't unload the dishwasher, how can you load the dishwasher? You've got to get the items out before you can put more items in. Strange thing, funny thing about that, isn't it? But that's the way life happens. So it is as we're priming the pump in prayer. We've got to get out some things. We've got to unload some things so we can put things in, shall we say. So we can operate the fullness of our faith and the power of our believing. So what we do is prime the pump. We prepare. We get the conditions ready by saying, these things I want to remove and bring clarity. So when I pray, the first thing you want to do is say, I want to remove all doubt. I want to remove all fear. I want to remove all questions. I want to remove all that which may be of the negative consciousness that says, you know, I'm going to pray, but this ain't going to happen. I'm going to pray, but, you know, likelihood, eh, not really. Because quite often what we say to one another is, you're in my prayers and thoughts. Not really, but you're in my prayers and thoughts. You know, we think it as a nice little thing, a little cliched phrase, but if you're really in the prayers and thoughts of your life, are those prayers and thoughts then in the affirmative? Because you could say, well, I'm praying, but shh, I'm not going to do any good. I'm praying and I'm believing you're in my thoughts, but I know my thoughts are saying, this isn't going to work out for you. This isn't going to happen. It's not possible. So it's that negativity that we've got to wipe out. We've got to unload the dishwasher. So we say, unload the negativity and put in the positivity that just simply says, I know from right on, from right on now, going forward, that the answer is, I believe and my consciousness is all saying yes. Yes, it's done. That's why the closing of the prayer is, and so it is. And so it is means that's the reality of our life. So as we begin, we have to set it up to say, uh, I believe it to be true, not I'm questioning it to be true, because you're closing with, and so it is. So if you open with, dear God, I'm not sure, I'm questioning, my consciousness is this ain't really going to work, uh, I can pray all I want, but I've never seen this miracle happen, I don't really believe that healing is really going to happen for so-and-so, I don't really believe that the miracle of finance is going to be there, and so it is. Well, look where it brought us. Look where it got us. You see, what's so important is that we understand, let's get the starting point. Let's get there and begin from that perspective. Now, prayer begins with a change, and that's this change in our thinking, our consciousness, a change to yes. And that's where we begin for all the miracles that ever happened, begin with an affirmative, a yes spirit a thinking, a consciousness, a way of looking at life with the yes outlook. So our first step is how do we get to this yes? How do we get there? Because we want this yes outlook. We want this consciousness of yes. And it begins, our first step is this. Do nothing. Do nothing. What? Pastor, you're telling me to do nothing? And that's going to help me get to yes, get to this space? Of course. Because doing nothing is embodying the very essence of Scripture. It says, be still. Be still and know. So I want you to understand that beginning of prayer is a consciousness of yes. And how do we get to a consciousness of yes? Well, we do nothing. We don't fret. We don't worry. We try to conjure it up. We try to pull it up. We try to work it up. We simply do nothing and we rest. We're still in this divine presence. Because when we're still in that place, there's something uh, that powerful that happens for us. In the not doing versus the doing, something amazing transpires. Because, you know, we're so busy doing stuff, we miss out on a lot. We kind of in prayer want to multitask. You know, we want to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We're sort of like a plate spinning on different uh, little sticks holding up that we're trying to keep, keep moving and keep balancing around in the journey of our prayer life and stop and do nothing opens up our lives for in that silence. What happens is there that the scripture says for it is there that you will know that I am. You will know that I am. 
You'll know the I am, the very power. For what is the essence of God? We know that beautiful name, I am that I am. That was given and spoken to Moses from the burning bush when he asked, who and what power do I go forward in? Who can I say that sent me? It's the I am that I am, the I am within you. You'll know it only in your silence, in your moment of being still and quiet to recognize it. For it's in the silence that we become aware then of who we are. Stop and be aware of who you are. Not who the world thinks you are, not who your parents may think you are, not who everybody else thinks you are, but who you are and you know who you are. Because in the silence you can stop and say, wait a minute, I feel this divine presence in me. I feel it in the silence. I feel it in the stillness. The divine presence is God. The I am in me. And in that I can acknowledge I'm the child of God. I'm the son of God. I'm the daughter of God. I'm that which is divinely filled. And I am that which now speaks from that perspective where I know within me the great I am dwells there. This silence offers us this peace that you can confirm. This silence offers you then a yes outlook. Because in the silence and the stillness, you set aside all the chatter, all the thoughts, all the craziness of the world around you. Because, you know, your mind is going nonstop, that little monkey chatter that's going on in your head. you got to stop that to be find the stillness. And in the stillness, you find great discoveries when you're quiet. You learn amazing things in doing nothing. How powerful. For this is the very place where every yes then begins with this agreement, this affirmative, this power of saying yes, and I affirm, I know, I believe. How many of you have encountered that all troubling question? Honey, will you do me a favor? Mm. Yep. That question just sets you up because you know it's got to have with a yes, right? Everybody, what? Honey. Would you do me a favor as always? Uh, oh, okay, you know, you're always set up for this. And when you say yes, it's a full agreement, isn't it? You're stuck on it. Because when you've just flipped me, honey, will you do me a favor? Oh, sure. And then you find out, oh, I already said yes. I didn't know that it was empty the dishwasher. I didn't know it was take out the trash. I didn't know it was all these kind of things that I'm supposed to be doing. I said yes to it. But in the affirmative, I walked through it because I committed to it. And how beautiful it is. When in prayer, you've committed to a yes. You've committed to it. And you walk through it. And you face everything in the journey of that prayer as you take step by step moving through your prayer life, knowing that you have committed to the affirmative in all ways. We spend so much of our life in this negating consciousness, a negativeness of doubt and fear. And what happens is that suddenly puts us in a state where you're actually drifting off to sleep. Not physically, but to sleep spiritually. A lot of our world are spiritually asleep. Scripture has talked over and over again about wake up, wake up, be alert. Calling people to awakening to spiritual truth and insight. But quite often our world is so... Uh, filled with almost a sleeping gas, almost an air that permeates our world that we breathe in. It just causes us to ah, drift off into a place of negative consciousness, not being alert and aware of the power of God that wants to work in us, the power of God that wants to answer that prayer you've been praying, that is waiting for you, the power of God that says, do you believe? Do you believe? And is waiting for your consciousness of yes unfold we move into this awareness this consciousness of yes as we understand our oneness with god in this doing nothing in this silence in this meditation in this moment of clearing your mind of all thought we open our life to oneness you know for many churches the concept of meditation sounds foreign different even that word sounds like something that would come from another faith tradition other than Christianity. Yet within Christianity is often the struggle to understand the power of prayer and understanding, being still and knowing that I'm God. 
and we don't awaken to this wonderful power that what's been spoken down through the ages in the ancient text within every scripture of the Bible is the power of the silence, the power of the meditation that says, I simply stop thinking. Wow. You know, it's really difficult to stop and be silent. We get a little nervous when it gets that quiet. A little uncomfortable. So much of our world is the music is playing while you're watching television, while you're working on your iPod, while you're talking on the phone, while you're doing the dishes or unloading the dishwasher. All these things are happening one right after the other because our world is so caught up with chatter, noise, atmosphere that suddenly we feel uncomfortable in the silence. We've fallen asleep. We've fallen asleep to a state where we're missing out the important thing is to be still and awaken and allow the Spirit to bring forth within us the truth that's there that's always been waiting to unfold for us. You see how important it is that that's why we're trying to teach more and more in our classes the understanding of what is the silence? What is being in stillness? What is meditation? to be involved in a guided meditation. It's coming up in July 21st and Sunday with our special guest. To be involved in the, sense, the moments of the stillness and the silence to see the power of God unfold for you. How important it is because, you know, we for years have empowered things called centering prayer here at City of Light. Uh, we involved uh, people, engaged them in a time of sitting in stillness and silence for 20 minutes. People, whoa. How is that prayer? Wait a minute. Nobody said a word. What? That's not prayer. Prayer is screaming, beseeching, going through lists, talking to God, telling, naming off all the things that need to be done that God hasn't been doing, that we start demanding and listing. We think that's prayer. Instead, we sat in a centering prayer, a meditation, a stillness, a quiet. That is prayer. Doing nothing opens your heart, opens your heart because it stops the chatter and the noise so the Spirit of God can speak to us. It's there that we experience then the oneness with God, that there is no separation. For in that stillness, we can discover deep within, wait a minute, I can feel the love of God for the first time because all I've heard in my mind going on, the love of God is not there for you. God doesn't love you. God doesn't approve of you. God doesn't welcome you. We hear the chatter going on and on and on, but when we still that chatter out, discover, oh, there's a divine love, a divine love. As a child, I don't know where it came from, but growing up in a pastor's home, all I knew is that God loved me. I just knew divine love. It seems so strange, though, when the world around me kept saying, but God doesn't approve of you and who you are. And I guess it, all I know is divine love. I don't know that I heard it in a voice. I don't know that I heard it in uh, an audible uh, voice coming from the heavens opening up. I just knew it within. I felt it in the silence. I felt it in the quiet. I felt it in the stillness, even as a child. And I feel it today most when I do nothing. When I sit in the presence and allow the world to speak to me Sometimes the voice of God is the greatest out in my backyard in a patio where I'm sitting there as the sun is coming up and the birds start singing to me. And the sun starts warming my body and speaking to me of the warmth of God. And the breeze rustles through the leaves and speaks to me of the divine nature all around me and this presence and that I am one with it, not separate. The same God that's in the wind, the same God that's in the sun, the same God that's in the song of the birds is the same God in me. And when I'm still and doing nothing, for the first time, I can realize the power of this oneness. This oneness means a state of being, of unity, of singleness of mind, a feeling that says, I am not separate from God, but God is at work within me. And God is in me, and it is who I am. I am the divine expression. I'm the revelation of God. I'm the hands, the voice, 
feet. That which God is working in and through. And we're one with God because we know that we have the same nature as God. Created in the likeness and the image of the divine is who you are. And so we have to stop and say the likeness of God is within me. I'm so one with God. I see that likeness in me. And then I see that likeness in someone else. And suddenly I love myself so much that I can love you so much. That you can love you so much. Then you can start loving me. That's the very oneness. That's the very oneness of God at work. Because it begins only when we've embraced this awareness. The love of God is in me. Oh, this me. This me that the world has told us not all that special and not all that great, but this me. Yes, the love of God is in me. And I begin to say, wow, that love of God is in me. And I kind of like me because of the love of God in me. And I like it so much that I can start loving you. And then I can start loving you in ways that you say, well, wait a minute, I can kind of maybe start loving you too. And wow, that's the beginning of something amazing happening in our world. It starts with this fullness, understanding of a unity and a oneness with God. And then what happens in our prayer that just seems to spiral from this consciousness of yes, from this doing nothing that opens the door to a oneness, that this oneness then uh, opens the door for us to understanding that our real work is the ask. The ask. Oh, but it's not the ask in the traditional way. The ask, please, please, please. You know how you asked mom for that cookie? Please, please, that special voice. You know how you gave those puppy dog eyes to those beloved ones, trying to get your way, trying to get something in the please, please. Oh, my dog knows the word please. Oh, too well. He comes and puts his face right on my lap while I'm working on the laptop and just stares and looks at me with those open eyes. I know what he's saying. He's saying, please, please, please. And that's his ask. It's sort of like, would you play with me? I brought my ball. Would you take me out? I want to go outside. Would you feed me? I'm really hungry. Would you please, please, please? And he just looks in this way. Our work of ask is different. It's not puppy dog eyes. It says with question and wondering. It's this affirmative yes that gives us the power to claim or demand. In Isaiah 45, 11, it says this. Ask me of the things that are to come concerning my sons and concerning the works of my hands. Command ye me. Woo. Command. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I can command God? In other words, I can speak in authority using the power and presence of God in that command. Well, Jesus spoke of it over and again. Rise and be healed. I command. I speak with authority. I speak with this. And my ask is not a puppy dog eye wondering and questioning. It's an affirmative with the power and consciousness of a yes that I demand. I command. I speak in this way. I claim and do so with such authority because I'm in a consciousness of yes. That says, when I speak the word, the universe knows, God knows, and understands. It says, I hear the desire of your heart, and I'm ready to meet it. Are you ready? Are you ready with a consciousness of yes? How important it is, this, because all of this work that we do is not about asking God to come into our lives in prayer in any way, because here's the kicker. God doesn't come in because God never went out. That's the key thing. God doesn't come into your life because God never went out. So it's this stillness, this doing nothing, this oneness that awakens us that God is within you. So go ahead and speak with authority. Speak the consciousness of yes, that my prayer speaks in such a way it's so affirmative that I know that I know that I know that when I say, and so it is, that which I've spoken is being done, is being accomplished. So this is where it all starts for us. You want to know how to pray? You want to know how to pray effectively? You want to know how to pray in a way that you're not amiss? That you're not hitting the, that you're able to hit the target? That you're not missing it? You want to understand this because what happens is it then begins with a consciousness. Every single day I wake up 
in the consciousness and the awareness of yes. Yes, God's at work. Yes, all things are working together for good. Yes, in the midst of no matter what's going on, the good is unfolding for me. It's yes, yes, yes. And it comes through then that preparation that we do, that primes, that gets it ready, that creates the condition with this yes for the yes to unfold fully. And that preparation is this wonderful silence of doing nothing, sitting in the presence, and letting the presence speak to us, letting the presence affirm all that it desires to do. I want you to know the presence of God is love. God loves you, loves you so much that God's not withholding a single thing from you. God's not withholding a single thing from you. God's just waiting for you to speak like the two blind men and asking, do you believe? I'm waiting to hear the consciousness of yes. So say these words with me, would you please? Would you repeat after me? Yep. Sure. Certainly. Absolutely. Indeed. Affirmative. Agreed. Okie dokie. You betcha. Now we're ready to pray. Amen.